rapid urbanization occurred in the 20th century, increasing from 13 percent in 1900 to 29 percent in 1950. And in 2008, 50 percent of the world's population are urban dwellers. And it's predicted that by 2030, over 60 percent of the population will be living in cities and megacities. Cities now dominate the world. This is the age of cities. There are three common perceptions of cities. Cities do not have rich biodiversity. Cities and native biodiversity are incompatible, and biodiversity serve no roles in cities. But we all depend on plants, animals, fungi, and microorganisms. Will the proliferation of cities now completely result in biodiversity loss in cities? Or can cities be the solution to this biodiversity loss? Singapore is one of the most highly urbanized city-states in the world. Singapore's population catapulted from 2.7 million in 1986 to 4.6 million in 2007, while the green cover increased from 36.5% to 46.7%. Let me take you on a quick tour around Singapore. Just 15 minutes walk from Orchard Road, one of the busiest shopping areas in Singapore, lies one of Singapore's best-kept secret. You can actually visit the Botanic Gardens and enjoy, which is recently, by the way, is recently inscribed as a World Heritage Site. You can find a six-hectare tropical rainforest. You can actually see 133 species of birds in the Botanic Gardens. That's one-third of the bird species that you can find in Singapore. Be a bit more adventurous and take a less than an hour drive to the Central Catchment Nature Reserve and just be amazed by the majesty of the lowland diplocarp forest when you walk through a 250-meter treetop walk or be calmed by a flowing stream in the forest. Just not too far away, go north to Sungai Bulo Wetland Reserve and enjoy the serenity of the mangroves. Or be enthralled by the thousands of migratory birds that visit Singapore, like some of you now visiting Singapore, between September and March every year. Turn back the clock and go north on a bum boat ride to Pulau Ubin and experience the seven different ecosystems that you can find in Chek Jawa. Or be more adventurous and head south and visit the Sisters Islands Marine Park, which is newly established. And again, be amazed by the marine biodiversity that you can find there. Hard corals, giant clams, octopi, sea anemones, sea grasses, snapping shrimps, just amazing. I gave you a quick tour of the ecosystems of Singapore. But these ecosystems harbor all these biodiversity. The 384 bird species in Singapore is more than all the number of bird species that you can find in France. 318 butterfly species in Singapore that you can find. Compare it with what you can find in the United Kingdom, which is much bigger than Singapore, and they only have 60 species. Our marine biodiversity is truly amazing, Consider that Singapore, considering that Singapore is one of the world's busiest ports in the world. You can find 250 hard coral species, and that's one-third of the coral species that you can find in the world. 
50 sea anemone species. That's more than what you can find in the whole western coast of North America, right from Vancouver to Southern California. And we can still find more and more species. Please drive carefully and don't be distracted by the tiger orchids that are in bloom on Napier Road, just outside of the US Embassy. We walk around quietly in the forest paths in the Central Catchment Nature Reserve. You can surely find a Malayan Kulugo. Be entertained by the otters. We have found the Singapore Botanic Gardens. We have found in Ang Mo Kyo Bishan Park, which is surrounded by high-rise buildings. You can even find them in Coney Island. You can find them in gardens by the bay. Open your eyes, and you probably find them somewhere along the canal near your home. Community bonding, that also occurs among our wildlife species. And there is this dragonfly trying to make friends with the yellow bittern. Don't be surprised if you see a hornbill fly past you when you're waiting for the bus outside the We Got MRT station, or when you're dining al fresco in Dempsey, and probably more places too. Singapore not only have all those species that I've shown you, but we continue to find more and more, discover more and more new species. Just last year, we found a new endemic, which means that it's found in Singapore and nowhere else in the world, a ginger, as well as two species of anguana, and even 150 new species of long-legged flies. One name after me. Um, and, and, we have, um, and we also have found more than 100 marine organisms when we actually did the comprehensive marine biodiversity survey. Cities like Singapore can be truly an undiscovered country. If there is so much biodiversity in cities like Singapore, what is Singapore doing to ensure that the biodiversity survive on a long-term basis. How did Singapore do it within 50 years of nationhood, where the population tripled and the per capita income increased over 100 times? In Singapore, every person, every single area, every species count because we are so small, this little green dot surrounded by blue. So we need to optimize what we do to ensure biodiversity conservation occurs here. Singapore evolved from a garden city, a brainchild of Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, to a city in a garden which means that the minute we open the door, we are in a garden. So how do we do it? All the conservation efforts carried out, implemented, are now consolidated and encapsulated in a nature conservation master plan. We try and do it systematically. So this plan comprises four plans, physical plan, programmatic plan, research plan, and community stewardship plan. Firstly, we have to conserve our gene pool in our core biodiversity areas, like the Bukit Timah Nature Reserve, Central Catchment Nature Reserve, Sungai Bulu Nature Reserve, Labrador Nature Reserve, Pulau Ubin. Secondly, and parks manage 350 parks. 300 kilometers of park connectors and 3,500 kilometers of roads. All of them are urban landscape, which are homes 
to plants and animals. The park connectors, as shown in this map, connect nature reserves to parks, parks to parks, and you can actually cycle all around this 300 kilometers of park connectors. This is Mandai Road, a heritage road. It shows how the overarching canopy of the trees can act as an aerial pathway connectivity for monkeys as well as squirrels to cross over. But we keep innovating. That's not enough. The 3,005 kilometers of road in Singapore form the green backbone of Singapore. And we are constantly innovating. We are now embarking on planting multi-layers of trees, emulating that of the forest, so that birds and butterflies and dragonflies can also thrive in these ecosystems, urban ecosystems. We're also reaching for the skies by promoting sky-rise greenery, vertical greening, and sky gardens. Some of our friends, like this two-centimeter freshwater crab, Johora singaporensis, that lives in about three or four streams in Singapore, they need our help because they're endemic found in Singapore and nowhere else in the world. They're very small populations, but we try and help them by ensuring that the streams are well looked after. In 1980s, there were 14 banded leaf monkeys in Singapore. Now, we have 50 of them. They're probably producing faster than Singaporeans. Um, they... <laughs> We could learn from them. Um, <laughs> and how do we do it? Because we study the ecology, find out what are their ecological needs, and provide for them. We can't do this on our own. We need to involve everyone. So the community stewardship is an important program for us. There are two important programs. One, Community in Bloom, where 2,000 over urban gardeners tend 1,000 community gardens in Singapore. Community in Nature is a program that involves people interacting, connecting with nature. We are now over 900 family groups, so that they start from young, and it helps with family bonding. And we have over 50 schools involved with uh, nurturing nature. And we have over 800 citizen scientists who actually help us collect information on our biodiversity and then sending it us through SG Bio Atlas. Having done all this, we feel that we need to actually figure out are we getting the results that we want to? So what we have done is work in partnership with the Convention on Biological Diversity and the Global Partnership on Cities and Subnational Actions on Biodiversity to develop an index called the Singapore Index on Cities Biodiversity, which helps cities measure how well their efforts on biodiversity conservation are. And these include indicators for the native biodiversity in the city, ecosystem services they provide, and how well they're doing in terms of governance and management. With innovation and ensuring that biodiversity is considered in, develop in the development process, there is definitely a possibility of combining both urban development as well as biodiversity conservation. These are some of the ecosystem services provided by biodiversity. 
surrounded by biodiversity, we benefit, urban dwellers benefit from all the eco services, ecosystem services provided by them. The air we breathe in every day is being replenished by trees. And they also get rid of the carbon dioxide that we produce. They cool the air, they clean the air, though not fast enough for the haze, but they definitely cool us down many, many more degrees. And they help to mitigate and adapt to climate change. So, on the contrary, cities can have rich biodiversity. Cities and native biodiversity can be compatible. And biodiversity is essential for city dwellers. Biodiversity don't need us, but we need them. By conserving biodiversity, we can truly create a biophilic, livable and sustainable, biodiver city. If Singapore can do it, so can you. Thank you.